the, the, the key thing is there would be a real push on both reforms and fighting corruption. As, as one chief of staff to one of the current ministers, and this is a, one of the reform-minded ministers in the, in the current cabinet of, of uh, ministers, uh, this chief of staff told me, look, we've done all the cosmetic reforms we can possibly do. There's not a single cosmetic reform left. You know, we, we, now we've got to do the real, the real surgery. You know, I, I always use the example, Ukraine is, is a patient that uh, they have a gangrene infection in the leg. They, uh, they're recovering from heart surgery. Um, they, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they just had their left arm amputated. And uh, the doctor is, is saying, well, we need more Botox. You know, we need more Botox here. Uh, no, no, you need to fix the fundamental problems. You know, these, uh, the, the answer is not Botox. The answer is fixing the, the heart problems, diet, discipline, uh, you know, fixing, k- killing the infection and so forth. So uh, there are no more cosmetic reforms. Under our Uresco administration, it's quite clear. The, the advantage of the Uresco administration is she's a Ukrainian patriot, but she didn't grow up in the system. She grew up in a Western system where there's, you know, checks and balances. So she knows the way to, to try to create that structure in Ukraine. I think that's, that would be very positive. Uh, number two, um, what also gives her a lot of strength is uh, the reality is that she made good money at, at, uh, in her, her previous job at Horizon Capital. Uh, so she's not, she's not a politician who's going to be chasing $1,000 here and $10,000, uh, which too many of, the, of, the, of these politicians do because they never have any money until they get to par- parliament, and then they have more money thrown at them than they could ever possibly dream of as a, as a kid. So she has her own money. She's not going to, she's not going to uh, take a gamble and, and uh, do something corrupt for, to, you know, to make a few bucks. She's got her own money. So that's also a very important um, you know, a very important distinction. So with that in mind, there's going to be a real fight on corruption. There'll be a real push to get these reforms done. Uh, certainly from a financial side, uh, I believe that should push to create more of a free market uh, environment. And I'm, I'm not saying that we've got to have a radical uh, uh, Milton Friedman uh, approved uh, in, in economic environment, but I think we can all agree, given Ukraine's communist legacy, that you, you've got to liberalize the markets. There's, there's just... Um, there's, there's too many state controls. Um, when they uh, have tried to do this in the past, it's only benefited the oligarchs. They've got to open up economic opportunities for the average person. And I think as, as someone who, who grew up in the West and where there's a, you know, a, a, a huge middle class, as we have in North America, um, Nellie is, is somebody who knows how to create that, that burgeon, to widen that, that middle class that basically only exists in, in Kiev City. Uh, essentially.